Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. If you have watched this channel for, I don't know, any amount of time at all, you probably noticed that I like to do things that are a little out of the ordinary. Pushing the boundaries of things, testing the limits, making things do things they weren't supposed to be doing. And that's no exception today. Today I am trying to use our Poseidon antenna, which is on this mast here behind me, on two meters. Because why not? Let me show you what's going on. So I am really space compromised here. That is my nearest neighbor. That is me, and that is my next nearest neighbor. And we're real close together. So I don't have a whole lot of room, but I do have the mast up in the air with the antenna coming out. It goes down here to our Poseidon antenna, which is then fed through the wall of the RV with this big hole that I cut in the RV just for running antennas in. And because I don't have a lot of space, I only have one of my radials down. Technically all four of them are still down because they're all four still there. But when they're like this, it's really just one big radial. And that just goes off in the only direction I can have it go off in because that's my neighbor's grill right up next to my RV. And because my RV is all metal siding, I can't get two meter radio signals out of the RV to local repeaters. So I've got to use an external antenna. And why have two right now in this little space? Let's go inside and play. This is the Radiodity DB25 radio that I have been playing with a bit here. And this is the power meter and SWR meter. So if we look down here in the corner, you'll see the SWR ratings. And then down here is the tuner. Right now the tuner is not plugged in at all. And so what I want to do is show you the current SWR on the antenna. So we got a 5.23 to one SWR, and we were able to open up the repeater, Kilo Mike 9 Golf for ID. And I really, really don't recommend running a radio at five to one SWR, so we need to get that fixed. We'll take the antenna coax off of the power meter and we'll put it to the antenna port on the tuner. And then we will take the coax from the power meter and plug that in. So we go from radio to the in port on the meter, from the out port on the meter to the in port on the tuner, from the out port on the tuner to the antenna. So the tuning procedure on this is a lot like it is on any other manual tuner. You wanna take a look at your SWR and then you wanna adjust the transmitter and the antenna side. And since these are variable capacitors, you kinda of have to adjust them a little bit each. And we will try and make this as quick as possible because we're tuning up on the repeater frequency. This is a very high Q setup when you do this. So if I tune off frequency, it's still not gonna be in tune when I get back to this frequency. So be polite. I don't hear anybody on the repeater. So here we go. 99. Oh, very close. So it doesn't take too long to get it into tune. And you can see that we're at one to one SWR. And what you would do is I would write down the N6 RDS repeater on my notepad, and then I would put down four transmitter and six antenna so that I can quickly come back here from wherever I happen to be and go four transmitter and six antenna. And see how high Q that is? I mean, 1.06 to one is pretty close anyway. So the lowest I can go there is five, and then two, three, there we go. Now we're back to one to one. And I'm still looking at four and six, but I was just a hair off. I feel like watching somebody take pieces of gear that weren't designed to do things and make them do things, then this is the channel for you. Be sure you are subscribed to see more stuff like this. There are two screws that hold this top case on on either side, and then we can take the case off and you can kind of see what's going on inside here. This is a pretty old design from MFJ. There's not really any indication of a date in here but I know it's not 2012, that's more of a part number. But this is one of the white-faced MFJ products. And the other one that I have, instead of having this black hammered finish, has a wood grain finish to it. So this is probably post wood grain and pre all black construction. Inside we have this here, which is your SWR bridge. And you can kind of turn it down. That's as far as it goes on the scale, or you can turn it up. So if you were putting 300 watts through, you want to adjust it so that it looks proper on your meter. And if you're putting 30 watts through, you want to adjust it so it looks proper on your meter. And then here's those variable capacitors that I was showing you from the front. And that's what they look like on the inside. Pretty sexy stuff right there. And this is kind of a high network. It comes from the antenna. This is basically your center conductor on your coax right here. And then this coil of wire is an inductor, which connects to the post on the capacitor. 
and then the two capacitors are connected together through a second inductor and then the third inductor goes out to there. And these are supposed to be tied to ground, which I'm assuming means through the chassis of the device, because you can see the ground screw here is connected directly to the chassis. The SO239 is also connected directly to the chassis. So your chassis is part of your antenna system. Pretty neat little device. Now it is time to do some science with the tiny SA to see just how much that helps out. And I have got this thing all set up and ready. I've got my Baofeng on 146.52 on VFOB. And if we do a key up, we're looking for number two, three, and four to be below this blue line. And that appears to be unpossible. So this radio is dirty on two meters. Let's see if we can clean it up with this MFJ921 antenna tuner. All right, we've got this thing all set up the same way we had before, except the tuner is now in play. We have the Baofeng going into the transmitter port through the tuner and out of the antenna port into the tiny SA through the attenuator that we need to make sure we don't blow up the tiny SA. I'm gonna turn this thing on. And for some reason, my Baofeng is now stuck in transmit mode and can't unkey. But you can see we're already starting to get some signals down here through the tiny SA. And if I look at the SWR meter, we are not in good SWR standing. So I need to get this tuned. There we go. That is pretty close to one to one. And now we need to wait and see how far this thing drops down. All right, there we go. If you tweak the knobs just right, you can get it all the way down. Let's get a close up on this. The bottom of the two marker is just below the top of the line. So we're as clean as we're gonna get on this thing. There you go. If you'd like to get yourself one of these really awesome tiny SA cases, I will leave a link in the description down below for you. It brings your non-resonant antennas into perfectly usable antennas for two meters. Cause who doesn't want a 25 foot tall two meter antenna? It also cleans up your dirty Baofangs, and that is money in the bank all day long. Now, my $17 Baofang radio is just as good as my $600 ICOM radio. Sometimes it's fun just to play with these things and see what they can do and learn a little bit about them. There are links in the description down below for some more info, including a link to the schematic for the... MFJ 921 tuner. You can find these things over on eBay, I'm sure, if you're lucky and patient and wait long enough for one to pop up, but this one is never leaving my hands. There is a video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.